and welcome. This video was created for the Circles of Innovation track as part of Valencia College's Summer Faculty Development Program, Destination 2015. Our theme this year is Mission Possible, Flipped Learning. What follows is a brief introduction to a wide variety of Google search tools that every teacher and student should know. In addition to the video, we also wanted to showcase Edpuzzle so that you could actually experience this new tool for making flipped video content interactive. Given our Mission Possible theme this year, we also thought it might be fun to build the learning around the mnemonic SPIES. So, next week when you're curating content as part of Destination 2015, think SPIES. Also, for those of you in the Destination track, please remember to log in and follow along to the end of this video so that you can earn your entrance ticket for next week's session. You will need the ticket with you when you come to Destination on Friday. Alright, so let's get started. The first letter in our SPIES mnemonic is S, which stands for shortcuts. Google has quite a few shortcuts. For example, Google makes it very easy to search for things like flight numbers, movie information, sports scores, and more. However, did you know that Google is also great for unit conversion in math? Okay, Google, what is 80 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? Okay, Google, how many minutes in a year? Okay, Google, what is 18% of $43? OK Google, how do you turn on OK Google? The next letter in our SPIES mnemonic is P, which actually covers punctuation, operators, and filters. I've found that students and teachers alike are often unaware of how certain words, punctuation, and filters can enhance their searches. For example, did you know that the minus sign helps you subtract unwanted content from Google searches? Another of my favorite punctuation tricks is using two periods. This can help filter results by date, or by cost. Google operators like file type can help you to find specific types of files on the internet. For example, if I'm an English teacher searching for subject verb agreement, I can search for handouts, presentations, and a variety of other file types. With the file type operator, I can limit my searches to only those file types. The site operator, on the other hand, helps you to search within specific sites. Most websites have a search bar, but unfortunately, as many of us have experienced, these search bars often don't help out all that much. But by using Google Search with the site operator, you will get what you're looking for. Filters are the last thing we wanted to share in this section. You can control filters with operators or by clicking on the Settings button in a Google Search. Under Advanced Search, you can filter search results by language, region, last update, safe search, usage rights, and more. These tools can really change the efficiency of your searches. The next letter in our SPIES mnemonic is I, which stands for Image Search. Google has quite a few capabilities related to image search. For example, did you know that in addition to using words to search for images, you can use images to search for words? Let me give you an example. If I have a picture on my desktop that I would like to learn more about, I can drag it into the Google Image Search and search by image. Also, built into the Google Image Search, you have a variety of filters to help you get the perfect resource for your students or for your presentations. You can search by size, color, type, time, usage rights, and more. You can also use Google Image Search to find great information graphics on just about any topic. Simply type infographic on and whatever you're looking for into the search field. For example, here I'm searching for infographics on Google Search. And since I remember my favorite one being red, I will go ahead and sort by that color. I could also search for information graphics on flipped learning. The next letter in our SPIES mnemonic is E, which stands for both extensions and Easter eggs. If you've never used Google Chrome, Google's browser, with Google extensions, you might want to take a look. The Chrome Web Store is loaded with a ton of free extensions for teaching and learning. For example, in addition to using extensions to save your favorite finds to Evernote and Pinterest, you can also get extensions like Hangouts, which let you easily communicate with students and colleagues or Autobib, which makes it easy to get citations for your favorite books. I also have Snagit, a free screen capture tool, Announceify, which reads articles to me while I'm eating lunch. You're now listening to number 32, a summary of Contagious Why Things Catch On by Jonah Berger, new books and brief, print PDF, and Screencastify, which is a super easy screencasting tool for making recordings to help broadcast instructions from my computer screen. The best part of it is that these are all free. E also stands for Easter eggs, which are basically unexpected, fun features that are built into Google. Students today crave content they can share with their social networks. If you want students to talk outside of class about things you were doing inside of your classroom, you have to give them some social capital or something that will make them look good in the eyes of their social networks. 
I have found that by sharing Google Easter eggs while sharing practical Google search tips, students tend to remember both better, and they are more likely to share them with friends. Some of my favorite Easter eggs include Zerg Rush, Bacon Number, Flip a Coin. Okay, Google. Flip a Coin. Use the force, Luke. Beam me up, Scotty. Do a barrel roll. Pac-Man. Breakout, Tilt, Google Gravity, ASCI Art, and more. The last letter in our spies mnemonic is S, and that stands for Google Scholar. If you aren't using this feature, you should really check it out. The purpose for Google Scholar is to give one point of access to the world's scholarly information. To find it, simply type Google Scholar into the search field. A Google Scholar search brings back academic books, journals, conference proceedings, technical reports, and the like. And in addition to giving you the links in blue, it also gives you metadata about the content in green and a link to a PDF version of the document if it is available. Moreover, the results provide reverse citation searches, links to related articles, and the actual MLA, APA, and Chicago citations. Okay, so our mnemonic for today has been SPIES, shortcuts, punctuation operators and filters, image search, extensions and Easter eggs, and of course, Scholar. This is by no means extensive. If you would like to learn more about Google Search, you should check out the two massive online open courses Google created, Power Searching and Advanced Power Searching. If you don't have time for that, at the very least, I would recommend reading through the Power Searching with Google Quick Reference Handout. And if you have any questions there, you can make great use of the Google Skills Tactics and Strategies page where they share video and text handouts on all the best Google search skills and strategies. In this video, we hope you found something you can use. Thanks for watching. Oh, and for those of you in the Destinations 2015 track, see you Friday.